his last outing, which was against his old team, the Terrapins, two weekends ago. Meanwhile, for St. Joseph's, 25 and 22 this year, the best thing they do is hit several 300 hitters in this lineup. Yeah, they can absolutely mash. I'm looking at Brett Callahan, the leadoff hitter, who we're going to see here momentarily. 384 right off the top of this lineup. That's a great spot to have if you're St. Joseph. So, Rutgers has to be careful. You know, you don't want to pitch around, guys. you got to try to get these guys down early and often. Another guy to watch out for is the cleanup hitter, Andrew Cosetti, the DH. He is the program's all-time hit king. Uh, it's Brett Callahan in the lefty batter's box. First pitch is in there, and we are underway. 76 degrees, a nice breeze, partly cloudy. You cannot ask for much more in the later stages of May as we are less than one week away, or less than a week and a half away now from the Big Ten Tournament. Rutgers building towards that. As Nick said, they'll take on Michigan coming up in a couple of days, but trying to take care of business in their non-conference finale as that misses outside 2-1 and one against Callahan. Behind so far, Bellow is, but... So you got to do sometimes. you got to be a little bit careful with a guy like Callahan. That Bellow goes back to the fastball. Callahan chases two and two. Go ahead to even up the count right there. Straight fastball. Fastball a little bit high right there. But as you mentioned, Dom trying to get him to chase. The all-important first out. Here's the pitch. And it missed outside. Now Callahan has been a great table setter this year for Joe's. A 493 on base percentage, with his, which is fourth best in the Atlantic 10 Conference. So, a payoff pitch from Sam Bello. And this one's cracked up in the sky out to left. Slight comes in. That makes the play, and there's one gone. Simple first out here in this ball game. Not too loud. Easy play there for Slight just to come on in. See if that gets the confidence rolling here for Sam Bell, knowing that you're going to put down one of the better hitters on this team down in your first batter of the afternoon. Now to bring up Conlon Wall. That misses low ball one. I mentioned Bellows coming off an outing two weekends ago. He had his first career start against Maryland. And Pitched all right. Wall flicks this down the right field line. Kuroda Grauer calls off Brito and makes the catch. A little confusion there, but the freshman comes over and cleans it all up. And two outs through the sky so far for Sam Bello. Good communication right there from Kuroda Grauer to call off Brito, as you saw as well. Right fielder Richie Sheikoff for trying to come in on that one as well for some backup. But Kuroda Grauer, great speed, and the freshman's been fantastic all season long and pretty much all facets of the game. And that was just a great heads-up defensive play. Uh, Rutgers has fielded it really well this year as you see the defensive alignment. First in the Big Ten, 15th in the country, 980 fielding percentage. And first pitch to Nate Thomas dots the outside corner. That's strike one. That's it. It's pretty good. <laughs> That's a pretty good field with fielding percentage right there. That's hard to get better with the way they've played. Mentioned one win shy of 40, 39 and 12 this year. Rutgers enters this final week of the season tied for first in the Big Ten with Maryland and trying to get to 40 wins overall for just the fourth time in program history. That's been a history-making year for sure. As Thomas goes out and gets this one, drives it to right, hanging though as Sheikoffer goes right in front of the warning track, makes the catch, and that'll end a 1-2-3 top of the first for Sam Bello. He looked good, and we'll see the Rutgers bats at the plate for the first time today when we come back for Rutgers' home finale. Lineup as a group, they hit it at 320. That's third best in the country, and you see all the threes and fours in that first column. That's why. Nick Samilla, we're going to see him in this first inning at batting third today, 402 on the year. I mean, absolutely absurd. The way Rutgers has been able to mash the ball this year has been nothing like we've seen in recent years here on the banks. Has several Big Ten Player of the Year contenders in this lineup. Ryan Lasko is one. And he takes that to make it one ball and one strike. Lasko, the sophomore from Jackson, New Jersey, is the Big Ten leader in hits, runs, and total bases. And he hits his hard on the ground through the left side. There's another hit. Well, that'll extend the lead right there. A nice job by Lasko to get things rolling for the Scarlet Knights. In 16 innings at the plate. And now Danny DiGiorgio, the sixth-year senior, is at the plate as he takes the slurve for strike one. 
Now, DiGiorgio, another guy having a career year. That he is. He's hovering around that high 300 average, pushing towards 400. 378 on the year. Slugging around 600 as well. Can't deny what he's been able to do, do this season. Yeah, DiGiorgio riding a 31-game on-base streak and is the longest for any Scarlet Knight this year. The pitch starts but stops the swing and takes a fastball upstairs for ball one. I mean, he gets on base virtually half the time based on that 483 on-base percentage. He's a good candidate to really put the pressure on opposing teams' defenses. And that's one on the that one's on the outer edge. It's one and two. Uh, Giorgio not a fan of the call. Dave Turco on balls and strikes. Mike Serra is at first. Jeffrey Arthur is our second base umpire. And Brian Drury is over at third. So Gallo gets ahead one and two. And another check on Lasco, who is a threat to go with 10 stolen bases, but he's back in time. Runners going, and what's the call? Time? I think time is awarded, yeah. So Lasko's going to go back to first. Didn't get a big, dramatic step out from behind home plate by Dave Turco. Yep, there it is. Huh. Bit of a quick wave of the arms right there. A little late, too. Now De Giorgio awarded time. Sometimes you see home plate umpires yell it to the next state to tell everybody that time is called. But anyway, stays one and two on DiGiorgio. Rutgers looking to get the offense going quickly. But he swings and misses. Strike three. Good fastball by Gallo. Yeah, the fact that he's batting over 400 is just mind-boggling. And the on-base percentage will get a boost up above 500 as Samillo gets hit by the pitch. And Rutgers There's Brito batting 438 with runners in scoring position. Yeah, there are several guys in this lineup that you do not want to see with guys on base. Brito's at the top of the list, and he's on a tear. Uh, first pitch on the inside edge. Good spot there from Gallo. Strike one. We'll see how aggressive Scarlet Knights decide to get, but we mentioned before how Lasco has 10 stolen bases, only been caught stealing once this year. Second to third, a little less likely, but hey, you never know. He could be aggressive in this first inning. And Brito fans at the slider. Strike two. You saw those 65 RBI for Chris Brito. That leads the Big Ten. He's driven in 17 over his last 10 games, batting well over 400 during that time as well. But Gallo's ahead, nothing in two. Long look at Lasco off a second. Now the pitch. Swing and a miss. Gallo stays off speed, and he gets Brito to chase it two away. Safe to say, Gallo's been able to really settle himself down. At first, base hit, get the strikeout. Hits, it, hits the next batter, then get the strikeout. Two down here in the first inning, and Rutgers still has two guys on base. But Gallo's been, in, I'm very impressed so far. I mean, I know it's very early in this ballgame, Don, but he's been able to battle back so far through these first four batters. Gallo, like with Sam Bello, not a guy we expect to go five innings today. His longest outing of the season is two innings, so. This is an important point to have a good outing. Runner goes from second, pitches outside the throw to third, not in time. Lasco swipes third. Samillo does not go from first, so that was not coordinated, probably on Lasco's own. But now Lasco's just 90 feet away. There you go. We mentioned, I just mentioned before, how aggressive is Rutgers going to get in this first inning? And right now, you go from two guys on. Now you have runners on the corners. Good heads-up play there by Lasco. Saw an opening on the base path and just beat the throw. Very nice by the speedster. You can see him creeping down the line between second and third to get a great secondary lead, and it pays off in the stolen base. So 1-0 count against Evan Slight. And that stays low, 2-0. Well, you know Rutgers is all about jumping out early to these leads. Usually when they score first, it's ridiculously hard to beat them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rutgers team that is averaging nearly 10 runs scored per game. That's been prolific this year. 3-0. and 
So one more bad one from Gallo. That would load the bases for Tony Santamaria, who's also part of the top five in the Big Ten in RBI. There's no let up in this Rutgers lineup. Said that all year. And that's ball four. So four straight bad ones to Evan Slight. He works the walk, and Rutgers has loaded the bases here in the first. Who's batting 545 with the bases loaded. And the first pitch dives way outside. It's a nice job by the catcher, Travis Rinker, keeping that one at the plate. Alaska taking a healthy lead off of third again. Looking for something to get away. Yeah, I'm not going to say he's going to steal home, but quick grounder. Even on the even in the infield, he can be able to score as long as they're able to beat out the throw. 2-0. Oh. Yeah, it was a leadoff single for Lasco, a one-out hit by pitch to Samillo. And now Evan Slight walked with two outs to load the bases. And Peter Gallo has thrown six straight out of the zone here. 3-0. and oh. Oh, you got to come back with something here. I would say maybe look for give him something to hit, maybe force a ground ball, force a pop-up. At this point, Gallo is just trying to pick his spots a little too carefully. The pitch. It's high and tight. Ball four, and that's going to walk in a run. Back-to-back -back four pitch walks. Ryan Lasco scores from third. one nothing Rutgers. He's at the plate. And now it's nine straight, missing the zone from Gallo. Mentioned he's a Jersey guy. Went to high school about 20 minutes away from here at Immaculata High School. And having tough times on the hill. And that almost hit Kuroda Grauer, 2-0. and oh. You want to talk about unconventional ways to get runs across the board. <laughs> you, get, you get one walked in and then nearly a hit, a hit by pitch right there. Would have brought in the second run of this inning for the Scarlet Knights with Samillo only 90 feet away. Now you'd figure at this point, if you're Rutgers, doesn't matter what the count is, you're going to take until you get a strike because that's now a 3-0 and count to Kuroda Grauer. Sometimes we call this being overpatient, Dom, but if you, like you said, if, if I'm Rutgers right now, there's no way I'm swinging at anything unless it's remotely into the strike zone. There it is. That stops a streak of 11 straight balls from Peter Gallo, 3-1. and one. Of course, aside on a 3-0 and oh pitch. So you'll, you'll, you'll just take that one all day. That's Kuroda Grauer take again. No, he squibs it. It's down the third baseline, but just wide, so it's a foul ball. Yeah, he knew that one right away, but a good heads-up play there by Nick Samillo coming down from third base. Might as well run. You got two outs. Sprint towards home. And now everybody will be going on the 3-2 pitch. A Gallo, despite the long run of missing the strike zone, can get out of this having only allowed one run. This be huge. The payoff, and it, it's off of the bat, or did it hit him? Oh, the appeal down to first. It's strike three. Kuroda Grauer tried to stop his swing. It looked like the ball, the pitch hit him, but on appeal to first base, Mike Sarah says he went around, and it's a painful strike three to end things in the bottom of the first. Take another look. Let's see. I want to say hit his forearm. Tough to see where it actually hit him there, but it looked like he went around. Maybe the hand as well. Man, that. Uh, it was a one, two, three inning for Sam Bello, and so it's the middle third of St. Joe's order for the first time. Yeah, first pitch to Andrew Cosetti is pulled down the left field line. Fair, just inside the chalk. And it skips over the fence. It's going to be a ground rule double. Oh, Cosetti just tucks it inside the line. He's the home run king at St. Joe's, but he collects a double, his 14th of the season. And the Hawks are right back at it looking to answer. Nice loud knock to open up this second inning for St. Joseph's. Didn't cause too much panic in this Rutgers defense in the first inning. And again, Dom, it's only a one up in lead, so St. Joseph's is certainly in in this ballgame. So that'll bring up Brendan Hewitt, another guy who's been very good at the plate this year for St. Joe's, batting 382. A 
the Devils have been his forte. Now, meanwhile, for Joe Mazza on the hill, you mentioned Nick, we haven't seen him in a bit. Another guy who has not pitched since the Maryland series, tossed a scoreless inning in, the game, in one of the games against the Terrapins. And that rides high and tight, 2-0. I mean, we've seen Mazza before. His ERA is below two. He's looking good this year out of the bullpen in relief. Again, this is all about getting these guys some work right now. You know, you don't want to take too much out of this appearance today, whether he is great or bad. But either way, get some work right now. Lacey's a midweek game. This is driven into foul ground, left side, slight by the sidewall, and he runs out of space. So it makes it a 2-1 count against Chewith. Uh, Joe Maz has been an interesting story this year, just in terms of how the numbers have played out for him. Freshman from Manalip in New Jersey, so about a half an hour south from here. 12 innings, giving up nine runs. Only two of them have been earned. That's part of the reason why he's got a solid ERA of 1.5. This one's a slow chopper to the right side. Brito scoops it up, and he wins the race to the bag. Meanwhile, Cassetti advances to third. So St. Joe's has the tying run 90 feet away as Brandon Drapeau will come to the plate. Good hustle right there from Chris Brito. Take the easier out, obviously. No double play in effect, of course. But now you got to watch out the third base right now. Now that St. Joe's is finally threatening, trying to tie up this game early on. Maza's pitch. This one's laced out to left center field. Slight cutting over makes the grab, but it's plenty for Cosetti to score. So a sacrifice fly for Brandon Drapeau gets the job done, and the ball game's tied at one apiece. Some small ball there for the Hawks, and they tie this ball game up. Exactly what you want to see if you're St. Joseph's. Obviously, you know, looking going back to that bottom of the first where Rutgers was really threatening it. They can certainly do it again. You got to get your runs where you can get them. So far, Don, both both teams, a little small ball, a little unconventional ways of getting runs across the board. Sack fly there for St. Joe's, but you know we're back to all square. And now base is clear for Travis Renker as the Joe's catcher swings through that for strike one. Ironically, St. Joe's leads the the A10 in sacrifice flies, and they show it there as this one's chopped slowly to short. But Giorgio fields throws, and the inning's over. But St. Joe's ties the game. Andrew Cosetti hits a ground rule double. Brandon Drapeau brings him in on the sacrifice fly. Again, this is the final week of the regular season. Both teams have very important conference series coming up starting this weekend. And so that's their priority. Want to get some guys some work and uh, want to try to make sure that everybody's ready to go for the final three games. Rutgers playing Michigan. St. Joe is playing St. Bonaventure. Yeah, it's pretty much it, Tom, when you look at what these two teams need to do this weekend. Get everybody fresh. Make sure everybody's legs are underneath them. You don't want guys sitting too long or without action. You can appreciate the strategy. Of course, you know, the, the old school baseball guys will say, well, we want those pitchers to go between five and seven innings before you get into the bullpen, not, you know, one inning, one inning, half an inning. things like that, but hey, we'll see what uh, some of these guys we haven't seen in quite a while, what, what they're made of here this afternoon. And Richie Sheik offers at the plate to start things out for the Scarlet Knights. Uh, nothing in two count against Sheik Hoffer, who's riding a 16-game on base streak. The pitch. And he chops the foul once again. Uh, Rutgers scored one there in the first inning at the plate. Had a hit, a pair of walks, and a hit batter. But it could have been more. Josh Corona Grauer struck out on a 3-2 and two pitch that ended up hitting him. Couldn't check his swing on it. So an odd way to end as Sheikhoffer fouls it off once again. Yeah, things were buzzing here. The bottom of the first is definitely a lethargic way to go out in that first inning.
Piccola will try another 0-2. And she coffer fouls it off once again. He's battling right now. I want to see the Scarlet Knights try to attack like they did in the first inning as well. So Ryan Lasko get the leadoff base hit in the first. Obviously led to a lot of potential success. But if you're just reading that scoreboard, Dom, it's one hit, one run for both teams right now. It's a good take there by Shea Coffer. You can see Piccolo, not a super hard thrower. Not really over 90. And just couldn't spot that on the outside corner. And now comes inside. Shea Coffer drives it the other way. But it's right at Callahan, who's now drifting back, leaps up, and it's gone. Whoa! It exploded. Callahan was drifting back, and then the wind did the rest. So Richie Sheikoffer clubs his third home run of the season. That's the Rutgers team that, as we know, hits home runs as well as just about anybody nationwide. Their 87th home run of the year as a group. That's the program record by far. And here's another guy who can club it, Jordan Sweeney. And he swings through that one, nothing in two. Tell you what, that last home run right there from Sheikoffer, he saw Callahan. It looked like he was actually going to make a terrific, terrific catch over the wall. That ball just managed to drift just a little bit further away than he anticipated. And again, you got to love this weather system out here. Yeah, the wind is blowing out towards left at the moment. That's something that changes every five minutes sometimes here at Baton Field. Must have caught the actual gust in the middle of the air. Look like a straight fly ball. Sweeney started. Yeah, the whole play at umpire Dave Turco says he went around. So it's strike three. Yeah, it so all four outs from Rutgers at the plate have come via the strikeout as Ryan Lasko comes back to the plate. And that's inside. Lasko singled his first time up and scored that run in the first inning. Two and oh. By the way, Mike Piccolo, native of Kansas, graduate student, started his career at UNC Wilmington. And trying to stop a streak of five straight outings, giving up at least one run. But he's a multi-inning guy, so we'll see if St. Joseph's uses him for two here. Uh, meanwhile, it's a 3 0 count against Lasco. Yeah, you got to wonder how both these teams are going to balance out their pitching today. See if guys go three innings, two innings, whatever the case may be. But for Piccolo, Dom, after a walk right here, you got to be interested to see if he's going to have a leash of more than just an inning. The Giorgio struck out his first time. And that slides outside, ball one. It is worth mentioning, too, with these two teams that this is the second time that they're meeting. These two teams played down in Philadelphia back on March 1st. Game Rutgers won 5-2. to two. Runners going. Pitch is low. The throw to second, not in time. The Ryan Lasko steals his second base in as many innings. And Rutgers has a runner in scoring position. He must feel extra aggressive today. <laughs> He's been on base twice with a base hit. Two stolen bases has the had the first run scored of the game for the Scarlet Knights, and he has been feeling one here this afternoon. And he stole third base back in the first inning. So guy out there for DiGiorgio. Bit of a throwback stat right there as well. But as you mentioned, they are you know, these schools are very familiar with each other. Not just in baseball, of course, all sports. But even this year in baseball, I haven't already met each other once in non-conference play. On the outside corner there to DiGiorgio. It's 2-1. And, and for the Rutgers fans who may not remember, the A-10 was before the Big East. And before the A-10, you've got the, it was the Eastern 8 Conference. And now, of course, Big 10. Swing and a miss. Piccolo stays off speed. And DiGiorgio didn't like it, 2-2. Two and two. Right-hander gets the sign from Rinker. Lasko with a solid lead off second. And now it's a full count.
Georgia is staying very patient in this at bat. Right, he's a guy in scoring position. Let's see if the scoring can extend the lead here in the second inning, give, him, give themselves more of a cushion. Yeah, he chops this deep in the hole. It's short. It's off Trajani and into left field. Lasco goes to third, and the throw's not in time. So DeGiorgio reaches on the single, and Trajani may have saved a run there by keeping that in the vicinity of the infield, but even still, Lasco is able to advance. Yeah, no out right there, Dom, but that was a great play by Trajani just to bat that. And now DeGiorgio goes from first, and there's no throw. So St. Joe's will concede the stolen base to DeGiorgio, his 18th of the season. And now two in scoring position. And most importantly, it interrupts an inning-ending double play. That it does, and this has been a very aggressive Rutgers offense today. Three stolen bases, and we're not even through the second inning. So now a single to the outfield could easily score two. Uh, this one is lofted out to center. Hewitt paused on it, now comes charging in, and it drops in front of him. Lasco was deked out, so now he comes to score. It's going to go down as an RBI single for Nick Samillo on a ball that Hewitt may have been able to get to. Three to one, Rutgers. I'm not sure if there was. Oh, you can see Trajani, or pardon me, Hewitt, put his glove up as if to try to fake out Lasco. As now Burrito drives this deep to center field. Hewitt back on the warning track. Goodbye. Chris Burrito bombs one to dead center field. Right and in the center field forest. So for Burrito, not only is it 16 home runs, but it's 68 RBI. Rutgers has scored five runs here in the bottom of the second inning to take that five-run advantage. All of this off of Mike Piccolo. Second home run of the inning as well. Sheikhoffer started it out with a solo shot. As now Evan Slight skies one to right. Wall. Drifting to his right, yeah, makes the catch. There's two outs. You never know, so you got to be careful if you're St. Joseph getting these long fly balls. Tough inning for Gallo. As that one is bent into Tony Santa Maria for strike one. Santa Maria worked a four pitch walk his first time up and earned an RBI for it as well. Bases loaded walk. Tried to check his swing, actually foul tipped it. So it's strike two. Uh, Rutgers offense that has already broken program records for runs, home runs, and total bases. Uh, still a full week of the regular season left to go. You've got this, and then you've got three games all on the Big Ten Network, Thursday, Friday, Saturday at Michigan to wrap up the conference slate. Mike Piccolo set the pitch, and it's just tip foul. Now, by the way, there is action in St. Joseph's bullpen, so this will likely be one and done for Piccolo. But trying to get out of this second inning. That's now Santa Maria tugs it foul down the line. Whew, he jacked that one. It went. Way too far left, but I'll tell you what, Santa Maria got a hold of that one. Yeah, he's sitting on nine home runs. Four different guys in the lineup have ten. That's been a year of power unlike any other for this program. As that one's in there, strike three. I'll tell you what, a Scarlet Knight sweep, I think you're pretty much all but, all but guaranteeing at least a share, if not the outright Big Ten regular season title. That would be quite the team accomplishment here in 2022. Now you see the new pitcher in the game, by the way. It's Parker Scott. Both teams basically will go one pitcher per inning here, try to get through this midweek game. Uh, but for Rutgers, Nick, as you said, if Rutgers sweeps at the very least, it will win a share of the conference title. For a team that, coming into play this year, had never even qualified for the Big Ten tournament, they could enter as the number one seed. Now, if Maryland also sweeps, Maryland has the tiebreaker, winning the series two weekends ago. So they would get the top seed. But still, regardless of how it shakes out, unprecedented territory in Big Ten play for the Knights. Yeah, no doubt. And again, we mentioned how that sweep, I mean, again, you never know how the final series of the season is going to shake out for Rutgers and, of course, when Maryland. 
place their final series as well. But at the very least, if, you, if you're the Scarlet Knights, you can come away with a share the Big Ten Conference. Now, when you throw sharing and conference title around this campus for uh, s some other sports as well, you know, people don't want to, people want to, you know, I People want outright I, titles, yes. Yeah, of but course they want the outright not titles. Not always practical. Yeah, they'll, they'll raise their eyebrows <laughs> a little bit. But, hey, it's it's a huge improvement for this baseball program that's seen its struggles within the Big Ten since they've come into the conference. And well, we've seen the we've seen the steady improvement over the past couple of years. And you mentioned before how they've never qualified for the Big Ten tournament, which looking at this team this year, you're like, wow, how is that possible? But when you only, only take the top eight teams, it, sometimes it can get tough if, you, if you're stuck in the, the bottom of the standings where you're just you're fighting for that – eighth spot, maybe even the seventh spot, but this year, there's no doubt about it. They're going to be in the Big Ten tournament. This is a team that's going to fight for maybe an NCAA tournament appearance as well. So a lot of things are brewing here in Piscataway, and I'll tell you what, even a regular season Big Ten title, that would be quite the feat to celebrate here in Piscataway. Uh, good at bat here. This is Liam Bendo, by the way, the second baseman in the Joes order, their eight hitter, with Luca Trajani, the shortstop, the nine hitter, and then Brack Callahan, the leadoff guy, do up after. Now Rutgers, this is the other important note. Rutgers has clinched a top four spot in the Big Ten tournament. So even if everything goes wrong this weekend, They'll still be, at the, at the worst, the four seed. As this one's driven well to left, carrying back, slight on the track, it's gone. A home run. That got out of here quickly. Liam Bendo's third home run of this season. This ball living up to home run park potential. 6-2 Rutgers. Well, St. Joseph gets one back. He can't put a bow on this game quite yet. It's still very early, only in the third inning. We know St. Joseph can mash the ball as well, so... They're going to put in different pitchers pretty much every inning for the Scarlet Knights. Don't take this Hawks lineup lightly. Take another look. That's off the end of the bat, too, by Bendo. Yeah, I want to say, I mean, Slight definitely ran out of real estate there. I mean, if, he, if he had maybe had better awareness of where he was on the field, maybe he would have been able to jump up and make an attempt at that play. But either way, that was a rocket from Bendo that was going to carry out no, no matter what. So it was just a matter of if Slight was able to jump up and grab that ball or maybe try to at least make an attempt for it. 1-1 one one count against Luca Trajani, the St. Joe's shortstop. Uh, tip your cap, too, to Bendo. Grinded out a long at-bat there against Scott. Able to foul a couple of pitches off before finally getting that one that was a bit more over the plate. Uh, Trajani did not think that was a strike. Turns around and has a word for Dave Turco. But the count's one and two. Deep breath in the one two. Started the swing, but Trajani didn't go around on appeal, so it's two and two. And Trajani is a solid nine a solid nine hitter. A lot like Rutgers, how you've got power guys or 300 guys in the nine spot. Trajani at 308. And he chops this slowly over to third. Santa Maria comes charging in, throws, and Brito hangs onto the bag. That's the first out. Good snag there by Brito. Bit off balance right there, but otherwise get the first out. Still a four, you, you, you have a four-run lead here, so there's no need to panic, obviously. Again, only the third inning. We know Rutgers can mash. But that's the all-important first out there for... Parker Scott. And Scott, one of more than a dozen seniors honored this past weekend as part of the Senior Day festivities. As Callahan hits this the other way off the inside part of the bat, DiGiorgio comes cutting over to catch it. Those two feed off each other quite well, Santa Maria and DiGiorgio, with highlight plays between the two of them. And a nice job there by DiGiorgio getting yeah, in man. front of Santa Maria cleanly to catch it. And that's the second out of the inning. Yeah, that was pretty clean. That was a beeline run there for Danny DiGiorgio. It will call Santa Maria. Great communication. Snagged into foul territory. Quick two outs right there. And now Conlon Wall at the plate. And he takes strike one. 
Now back on that topic of seniors, though, 17 seniors on this team, 13 of them new graduating seniors. A couple of others came back after celebrating Senior Day last year. Now we have seen this veteran presence with this team. They've carried themselves like veterans. Yeah, you don't want to look too far ahead, of course, because you still have one series left in this season. Then, of course, the Big Ten tournament potential NCAA tournament games. But, you know, you always want to say, all right, what's the future of this program? And, you know, it's veteran heavy right now. But, you know, these young guys could turn into veterans in 2023 anyway. Uh, some great youth on this team. Lasco just a sophomore, and he makes the catch there. This will be Embleton's first appearance in nearly two months. And he's going to face the bottom third of Rutgers' order, starting with Josh Kuroda Grauer. If he's able to settle down this Rutgers lineup, then maybe it is time to get him loose over the course of more than just an inning. Try to settle things down, of course, because Rutgers exploded in that second inning with five runs. Yes, they did, including a pair of home runs. Solo shot for Sheikhoffer, a three-run bomb for Brito. As now Corota Grauer lifts it up in the air. Right center fields, and Hewitt makes the catch. That's the first down. And I want to guess that is it's... If it's not the first, it's one of the first times in this program's history you could say that about a team. I mean, you might have to say that stat again. That's so, that, that's so absurd this year, the way this offense has been able to play this year and really mash the ball. That's that's outstanding. You know, it, you look at this program, it's a year of first, year of historic achievements, and that's just the latest one for the Scarlet Knights in 2022. Nice strike two to Sheikhoffer. Yeah, Rutgers has had 442 innings at the plate and scored 487 runs. That's big numbers, and it it sounds wild. It might just be a, a niche stat, but it's remarkable. Rutgers, on average, is scoring more than one run per inning. Pretty easy way to win baseball games. I was going to say, you can win a lot of ball games <laughs> using that strategy. That one's off the dive of Thomas, and it's going to be no play at first. So Sheikhoffer will beat out an infield single. Nate Thomas made a nice try on the dive. Doesn't get a lot. Doesn't get too much credit as a speedster, but Trajani really had no chance of that throw. But I thought maybe if that ball was beamed a little bit faster, maybe Trajani would be able to at least try to make a throw off that bounce. But again, St. Joe's is keeping they're, they're keeping the ball in front of them. They're just not able to finish off these highlight reel worthy type plays so far today. And now here's Jordan Sweeney. He's ahead one to zero. A pitch from Embleton. Now it's upstairs for ball two. Jordan Sweeney has really gotten into the swing of things offensively lately. Three straight games with a home run. That includes in each of the two Bowling Green games. As he charges this one to center field, Hewitt back, and it one hops in front of the fence, now over for a ground rule double. And a fortuitous bounce for St. Joseph's because Richie Sheikhoff has to stop at third. The unluckiness of the turf out here too <laughs> the complete turf field had a hard bounce right over the wall and now Lasco chops it to third Thomas throws home Sheikhoff for trying to score but he's out nice decision by Nate Thomas a clean field and a strong throw and Sheikhoff is cut down trying to score hey, get so on the play Sweeney advances to third and Lasco reaches on the fielder's choice and now there's two outs for Danny DiGiorgio <laughs> and that's high and tight, ball one. A little chin music to start the, start the at bat. Uh, Embleton has a chance to keep Rutgers off the board here. Uh, Giorgio with a single plus a run scored in the last inning. A ranker couldn't keep it in front, and so Lasco will take second. Heads up play there by Lasco. He's been phenomenal with his base running this afternoon. Two stolen bases, and I think that's going to go down as a wild pitch. It will. So two in scoring position here for DiGiorgio. And Embleton deals a 2-0. And now 3-0. 
And for Embleton, you don't want the wheels to fall off here. He's done a good job eliminating the damage. No runs across the board at the moment in this third inning. Again, I'll mention what we've talked about with St. Joseph's. They hit the ball really well, and they are a great power-hitting team. The four runs not insurmountable by any stretch for them. As that one hits the upper inside corner, just nicked the strike zone, three and one. Not a bad take there from DiGiorgio. Seems like he had to move out of the way just a little bit, but that ball just caught the inside of the strike zone. But a hitter's count still, and the pitch. This is pulled down the left field line. It's a fair ball, and it's going to score two. Sweeney trots in, Lasko behind him, and Danny DiGiorgio coasts in his second with a two-run double. Another rocket down the third baseline right there for DiGiorgio. 8-2 lead for the Scarlet Knights. Really blowing it open. We thought they were going to blow it open in that second inning, but you know, St. Joseph wants to crawl back into this one little by little. You know, St. Joseph scores one, Rucker scores two. Batting average has been updated to 406 on the year now. One of the best seasons for a Rutgers catcher, I'd say, ever offensively. Tough to pick another one off the top of your head. I couldn't. With the blend of average of the ability to hit for contact like Samillo has and the power that he's packed as well. Man, 15 home runs on the year. And Embleton misses that high 2-0. And maybe some folks at home already saying, save some, save some. As Rutgers gets ready to take on a Michigan team that is third in the Big Ten in a lot of these offensive categories behind Rutgers and Maryland. Yeah, well, just like the postseason, Dom, as, as, we, as we see in Major League Baseball, and of course you see it in college baseball as well, it all comes down to your pitching when it comes to the postseason. And you can practically consider this series in Ann Arbor this weekend for Rutgers as a postseason series. You know, you're, you're competing for a Big Ten regular season title. Might need a sweep out in Ann Arbor to clinch that title. And you want to go in, try to get the number one seat going into the Big Ten tournament. So we'll see how the pitching operates for both sides in that one. A three and one count here against Samillo as he fouls it off. Samillo with a single a hit by pitch and an RBI so far. Giorgio at second after the two run double. And that one gets away from Renker, so it's ball four, and it also allows DiGiorgio to take third. He's got the same setup. Runners on the corners. <laughs> he was looking for another home run there instead of strike one. Almost a golf swing there. Uh, DiGiorgio, uh, pardon me, Brito has been in a groove. Eight home runs now over his last three weeks of baseball. That's on the inside corner. It's a great spot to pitch to Brito. Nothing in two. I think he was trying to hit the graduating seniors on that are posing for pictures over there by the Jersey Mike's Arena. <laughs> yeah. That graduation's taking place in the arena once again today. Now Brito behind, nothing in two. Embleton's pitch. And missed upstairs. Now a lot of these guys got a chance to partake in some of the graduation ceremonies, especially on Sunday. Rutgers didn't have to play that day, going to commencement. Now a 1-2. That's behind Brito. Look out. Now Brito fortunately froze. Sometimes batters end up getting hit that way. Your instinct is to bounce back, and there's nowhere to go. Oof. That was close. You know, he skimmed his back, too. 2-2. Two -two. Strike three. How about the break on that off-speed pitch from Embleton? And he throws Brito one pitch after throwing it behind him. Trying to be the first guy to go multiple innings in this game for either team. And we saw Rutgers go with Sam Bellow to start and then Joe Mazza for the second. And Scott pitched a four-batter third inning. Got the final three outs in succession, but gave up a leadoff home run to Liam Bendo. It's a rarity today to see a guy come back after a second inning. Yeah, well, so far it's the only guy to try to do it. And he will do it against the best part of St. Joseph's order. Three, four, and five. Nate Thomas right now in a no-ball, two-strike hole. 
We've mentioned his name a handful of times already today, at least defensively. Making some plays and also knocking down some balls up over there in the infield. The pitch. A fastball runs in. And you got to wonder if Scott's, you know, since Scott's the first guy to come back out onto the mound for a second inning of work, I wonder how long he's going to go in this contest. Maybe this could be it, or maybe goes one more, depending on how things go here with a six run lead. One, two. And now outside. Well, Scott was one of only three relievers to pitch in the two games against Bowling Green this past weekend. Rutgers swept the two games 12 to 5 and then 21 to 1. Canceled the final game because of all the rain in the forecast. But Scott had a great two inning outing. It was a no hit outing. No hits, no runs, just a walk and a pair of strikeouts. It's been a while for Scott since he's gone. More than two innings, his career high in innings. You know, three and two thirds back in 2020, February at Miami. So again, I mean, maybe we see that again today. Again, you want to get these guys loose, ready for the series against Michigan. Thomas fouls off the breaking ball, stays at two and two. Not only that, you want to say you want to save some arms, of course, in your bullpen to get the guys that have been used sparingly over the last few weeks in Big Ten play, get them a lot more work today. So you get your A team going against the Wolverines for a three game set. Another 2 2. And Thomas lays off. Full count. Well, the other thing that both teams have to think about is they would obviously like to make long runs in their postseason tournaments. Rutgers already in. St. Joe's will have to try to solidify that this weekend against St. Bonaventure. If you stay in the tournament for a while, that means three, four, sometimes five games you've got to pitch through. Chase and a miss, strike three. Nate Thomas went outside of the zone. Uh, Parker Scott lures him there with the fastball. First strikeout for Scott. Good job by Scott right there. Start the inning off on a positive note. And you mentioned, Dom, and guys like Parker Scott, you know, you're not really going to see him too often maybe in those pressure pack situations when, we, when it comes to the Big Ten tournament, but when you have to play that many games over a short period of time, and that is really a test to your depth. So, again, credit to Steve Owens for getting guys like Scott out there on the mound for more than an inning and just getting all these guys loosened up midweek, seeing what they're made of. And again, this is not the top-tier quality of a team you're going to see in conference play like a Maryland or even a Michigan this weekend, but you, know, so you have to put them in certain situations, and Rutgers, of course, aside from that second inning, they've been in a bit of a battle with St. Joe's. I mean, they're, they're putting, they, you know, they already put two runs across the board. They've been threatening. Now here's Andrew Cassetti, who scored a run in the second inning. Had a ground rule double and then came in on a sacrifice fly two batters later. Like that breaking ball just missed, and you saw or heard a couple groans from the <laughs> Scarlet Knights dugout. 1-1. One, one. And Cassetti flicks it the other way. Shikoffer coming in. Brito now. Corota Grauer coming out. And it's Corota Grauer who makes an outstanding grab by the line. Sliding in his back to the plate and somehow caught it right in the basket. Two outs. Boy, it's going to be fun to watch this kid over the next couple of years while he's still here. But what a tremendous play. Slid. Coming from the coming from his second base spot, that is tremendous. He called he called off the outfielder and the first baseman when they had arguably a better chance to grab it. That was just a tremendous play by Josh Corota Grauer. Take another look, avoids Burrito, and still locates the ball. Getting the ball here with nobody on, two outs in the top of the fourth, and the first batter he's going to face is Brendan Hewitt. And you see the numbers on Cinebaldi. He's pitched some quality innings this year for Rutgers, but it's been some ups and some downs for the sophomore. And boy, would they love to get him straightened out for the stretch run. Yeah, what better way to do it now? I'm not going to say, I'm not going to be, I, mean, I guess I'm a little surprised he's going to be going out there today. But hey, might as well get him, as you mentioned, Dom, straightened out before final series and before the Big Ten tournament. He's been a guy that's been using some pretty big spots throughout Big Ten play. And he's had some really good starts, too, in Big Ten action. Now, the one that I go back to immediately is one run on two hits in a win against Nebraska. Man, some good, some bad. You just want to see a little bit more consistency out of him. 
And break like that, Justin Sinibaldi's a really talented pitcher, and he just fooled Brendan Hewitt for three straight pitches. Rutgers wants more of that from Sinibaldi, and we'll see if we see more of him as this game goes on. Evan Slight will start it off, and he gets tied up on that breaking ball. Strike one. Yeah, Rutgers scored once in the first. A bases loaded walk to Tony Santa Maria. Five runs in the second, the big inning. Three run bomb by Chris Brito was the biggest swing. And then in the third inning, Danny DiGiorgio clapped a two run double with two outs. I just kept the trend up. Now, Torres is quickly ahead, no balls and two strikes. Lefty on lefty battle two as it dives low for ball one. Now, as you could probably guess, this is true for a lot of teams in our area, New Jersey, Philadelphia, New York City areas. Several New Jersey natives on the St. Joseph's roster, and Nick Torres is yet another one as that's chopped foul. From Marlboro, New Jersey, and went to Colts Neck High School. Colts of course, not too far from here. Give or take 25, 30 minutes. This is a school that really recruits the short conference in Cape Atlantic League well. Let's tap foul once again by Slight. Stays one and two. Scarlet Knights always that's been able to recruit the Cape Atlantic League a little bit more in recent years finding the hidden gems down there. Now we could see two of them in this inning. As the one-two is jacked down the right field line, will it stay fair? Yes, sir. See you later. Evan Slight joins in the home run mix. Third shot of the day for the Scarlet Knights, and it's a seven-run lead. Take the parrot for a walk. A, hopefully it didn't mean anything too much. <laughs> <laughs> now just a ho-hum eighth home run of the season for Evan Slight. He was up to 42 RBI as well. Now Rutgers, by the way, 89 homers this year now. I love it for Evan Slight, too. He's one of a couple of guys I've seen on this team pull the Edwin Encarnacion, stick the arm bar out, and, and take the parrot for a walk, <laughs> as Encarnacion used to do. A great slugger and is 15 years or so in the big leagues. Of course, great paying great homage to Encarnacion. Got to love that. A one-on-one -on -one count here against Tony Santamaria, one of those guys from the Cape Atlantic League that we were talking about, native of Absecon. Played his high school ball at is it ACIT is how you talk, how you'd uh, call it, Atlantic County it. Institute of Technology. That's it. I, what am I, the uh, native Cape Atlantic League expert just because, I yeah. Play, oh, yeah. Yeah, just because I participated in sports down there when I was in high school? Absolutely. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and after him, Jordan Sweeney a couple of batters later out of Egg Harbor. Jordan's younger brother, Justin, committed here as well. He's been an absolute stud for Egg Harbor Township so far this season. Do two. And Santa Maria lays off, so the count runs full. Santa Maria looking for his first hit of the day. Mentioned the bases loaded walk back in the first. Here comes a payoff. And again, it's fouled off. You mentioned that home run stat down there. They have 89 home runs this season as a team. And it's not that big of a stretch to say they couldn't hit the century mark before the season is over, before you hit Big Ten play. You have three games left. You never know how many more they're going to hit today. And then over a course of a three-game set at Michigan, you just never know. This is headed the other way. Right center field. Wall lets up. It's off the wall. A one-hopper. Hewitt has to cut back and play it as Tony Santa Maria stops at second with the double. They hit it hard. Maybe not all of the barrel, though, and tried to drive it the opposite way. Regardless. If that. And now Josh Kuroda-Grauer out of Franklin High School, just down the road. Only guy in the Rutgers lineup who, four innings in, has yet to collect a hit. And that may change right here, as this is cracked into center. Field charge by Hewitt. Slides, and he makes the grab. Nicely done. It could have been a hit until Brendan Hewitt came charging in for it. That's the first out of the inning. You can see it took Hewitt an instance, a an, an, uh, split second to get there. 
Uh, in the end, though, nice sliding catch. And now Richie Sheikoffer, who's halfway to a cycle, two at-bats in. Now the home run to start and then had a single in the last inning. That curveball bends low, 2-0. They're certainly swinging away on both sides here. No lack of urgency this afternoon. Nick Torres, no time to settle into this outing. Home run double to welcome him to the ball game. As it's fouled off, it runs the count to two and one. Now, Torres has been a relied upon guy too in conference play. Sheikhoffer punches it foul. Now he's pitched in three of the last four conference series that St. Joe's has played in. I pitched last weekend against Davidson, gave up two runs without getting a hit. And he's gotten the count to two and two. And now he'll look back Santa Maria. Torres used a bit more this year than he did last year. Had one appearance in 2021. That stays inside, so count runs full here against Sheikhoffer. Good take by Sheikhoffer there. Look at that one. Didn't, that one didn't have enough bend to break back into the strike zone. Now Torres getting a chance to face the only two lefties in the Rutgers lineup here, starting with Slight and now Sheikhoffer. As Sheikhoffer goes down to get it, Depoe plays it nicely off the turf. And takes it to first himself for the second out. A couple clutch hits as well this season. The emerging star for the Scarlet Knights is going to be a fixture in this lineup the next couple of years as well as this team looks to keep this success going long term. 1-0. Swing and a miss. Chase to breaking ball, strike one. Now Sweeney may have had the two most pivotal hits of Big Ten play this year. Certainly the two, I think, most uh, commonly uh, or most popular on social media. The bases clearing triple in one comeback win over Indiana and then the walk-off home run to win on Easter Sunday against Indiana. And he's fallen behind on the count one and two, though. Torres deals and missed with a curveball. Yeah, I remember when he... That the first one you mentioned the day before Easter, it was it was a weird play. You kind of just dropped out of the sky in the outfield. There was a collision in the outfield as well, and then you just see a bunch of guys come across and score. And he, uh, you know, he, he's been he's been clutch this season. There's, there's no doubt about it. Despite the fact that he's bat batting at the bottom of the lineup, it's good to have a guy in the ninth spot who can really hit the ball like that, for, especially for power. Yeah, and for a power hitter, 273 average, it's solid. I get the job done for sure. Here's a payoff. Swing and a miss. Strike three. A breaking ball there from Torres, and he strikes out Sweeney to end the bottom of the fourth. Right back here, as some students like us come back here and uh, you know hang around a little bit longer, or, or, or it's elsewhere in college athletics or you know professional athletics, whatever they, whatever they want to do. Uh, you know, it, it seems like they have done everything they need to do to be quite successful in the professional realm. Yeah, absolutely true, and a bigger reason why they are the reason why these broadcasts look and appear like broadcasts you would find on the Big Ten Network. And the reason why we get so many compliments on the broadcast is not what you hear on the broadcast. Sometimes that stuff stinks. Not always all that good. But the students do a great job. We're really appreciative of them and all the work that they do. I have to say a big thank you, too, as we start the fifth inning here. Uh, a big thank you, too, to the three full-timers who work on our, our Vision or Big Ten Plus crew, Colin Osborne, Mark D'Agostino, and Maria Kiros, who put in a ton of work and a ton of legwork to just cobble the broadcasts to de together strategically. They plan things out. Uh, they do everything from producing these broadcasts at the university to doing video things for all the graduations that have taken place over the last two weeks. Colin and Maria are at Jersey Mike's Arena right now 
doing the video board for the School of Arts and Sciences graduation. So big thank you to them as well. That's the first batter of the inning. Brandon Drapeau for St. Joe's as it's fielded up the middle by Kuroda Grauer, but it, the throw pulls Brito off the base. So Drapeau will reach, and that'll start the top of the fifth. So he reaches. That's Justin Cinebaldi on the hill for his first full inning of work. Came in to get the final out of the fourth inning. And now Travis Rinker takes low ball one. Now one more thing I want to say about uh, the Big Ten Plus broadcasts. This is our 143rd and final Big Ten Plus broadcast produced out of Rutgers this year. 143. I feel very confident in saying that is a Rutgers Big Ten Plus program record. To add to the fact, too, that it's been north of a dozen broadcasts re-aired on the Big Ten Network this year as well. Yeah, that's got to be. Uh, you know, we're talking about this baseball program having an historic season. It was a historic calendar year <laughs> for Big Ten Plus here at Rutgers, and I believe, uh, you know, just just to toot uh, my own horn home as well for for wrestling. I believe it was the most wrestling broadcast we did this year as well inside Jersey so. Mike's Arena. Ten matches this season, uh, over eight separate days. Had the quad meet back in November, and after that, eight separate, uh, or excuse me, seven separate dual meets following. For or throughout the winter, and it's just been you know it's been great. You know, obviously the baseball setup has been just as great. Softball as well. You go men's and women's soccer, a little basketball. I mean, you got you got everything over here. And yeah, they cover just about every sport. As Travis Rinker flies out to right, it's the first down of the inning. That's been an outstanding year to have so many broadcasts. Part of the reason why is those 143 broadcasts have included. Uh, NCAA tournament games for women's soccer all the way up to the Elite Eight uh, and a uh, first weekend's worth of matches uh, in the uh, field hockey tournament as well. Uh, some Big Ten tournament games as well here on campus that they produced. So uh, it's been a really great, one of the, the banner years for this, this, this university athletically across the board. Yeah, this is what the administration envisioned when joining the Big Ten. You know, we're talking nearly 10 years ago now. Of course, except in the invite 10 years ago. Yeah. Joining, it, yeah, joining it in 2014, and now it's – you can't say it's finally coming to fruition because it's, it's been brewing for the past couple of years. And, of course, you know, not everybody's on the same page in terms of elite success, but it's it, it just keeps going and going and going. We see you know, it's paying dividends with baseball this year, and it's rising in some of the other premier sports on campus as well. There's a strike to Liam Bendo, batting with one-on-one -on -one out here in the top of the fifth. Justin Cinebaldi trying to strand the leadoff base runner. Yeah, lots of winning. Rutgers baseball is looking to be the third team at the university to win a Big Ten title this year. This is chopped to short. DiGiorgio waits on it, so they'll only get one out. It's at second. So Drapeau is stopped. He's a lead runner, and Ben Dill will reach with two outs. Smart play, though, there by DiGiorgio getting the out at second, keeping a runner out of scoring position, taking – the quote-unquote easier player right there. You know, t it would have been tough for a double player right there as he has, you know, he hesitated a little bit, but, you know, the way the ball was hit, maybe you only get the one out anyway, so you might as well take the one that's closer to you, keep runner out of scoring position, and again, just one more out, and you can get through the fifth inning with only two runs across. That first pitch to Luca Trajani misses outside. That's ball one. Trajani, the nine hitter in the St. Joseph's order. Uh, Joe's scored one in, the f uh, one in the second inning and then one more in the third. But they have allowed scoring to Rutgers in all four innings that the Knights have come to the plate. Uh, they tied it at 1-1 going into the bottom of the second, but Rutgers scored five runs in that half inning, and Scarlet Knights have not relinquished, relinquished the lead since. 1-1. Outside corner strike. Now Dave Turco has had a wide zone, it's felt like. And that was another one of those calls. Yeah, I thought that one could have went either way, but <laughs> if you're the score nights, you'll take it, especially if you're sitting a ball that you get ahead in this count. Two outs, one and two right now. 
And the lefties pitch. It's fouled back. So that will try the 1-2 one, once again. Always appreciated the fact that <laughs> Dom, you, know, you and I have been doing baseball games for years at this field. And it's the first year in this press box where they actually have plexiglass to prevent those balls coming through the net. <laughs> That's true. It's a slow chopper to third. Santa Maria over to first. A lunge and out. Nicely done. Santa Maria on the charge. Chris Brito full stretch. And Luca Trajani is thrown out at first, trying to reach on the ground ball. Tremendous play right here. Good spot there for Cinnaboli on that pitch, but just a tremendous throw by Santa Maria. Get across the diamond. Good stretch there by Brito, and Rutgers comes away unscathed that inning. Yeah, just a leadoff single for Drapeau. We go bottom five. We're halfway through here in Piscataway. The Scarlet Knights have a seven-run lead. Who have gotten the ball so far. And here's the fifth pitcher into the game for the Hawks, Patrick Shearer. He's going to face the top of Rutgers order, Ryan Lasco, Danny DiGiorgio, and Nick Similo. Uh, but so far, the Hawks have had trouble keeping Rutgers at bay. Yeah, so much for a Hawks pitcher going more than one inning so far this afternoon. Five for five today. Ooh, that just hit Lasco on the elbow. Yeah, that never feels good. I don't care how much padding you have on those elbows. That never feels good, whether you get it. Top, bottom, right in the middle, funny bone, whatever the case may be. I just, that's never fun getting hit right there. And he'll take first base. If I remember correctly, Lasco got hit on the elbow the other day. It was during the uh, – that was recently. It wasn't in the Bowling Green series, just going back through the note. Not a lot of padding there. Definitely some extra sting right there. He's on base again. He's been living <laughs> around this diamond today. Now, Lasco has reached so far on a single, a walk, a fielder's choice, and now a hit by pitch. So what is it, four out of the nine so far? As the pitch from Shearer to DiGiorgio stays upstairs, ball one. Interesting, Dom. I mean, he came in today with ten stolen bases. He's credited with, he's according to our little stat sheet, he's credited with four today. This popped up. Foul ground. Drapeau in front of the fence makes the catch. And Giorgio retired. There's one away. Talk about up in your production. It's <laughs> so on bases today for Lasco. Now here's Nick Similo. Takes low ball one. Now Rutgers is a group. It's the one offensive stat that they do not rank among the Big Ten leaders in. Stolen bases. As that one hits the back, that hit the back of the helmet? That's what it looked like. And that came down with a lot of break. Anyway, Similo gets hit for the second time today. And Joe's only has a half-game lead over three different teams tied for seventh place. Now they're trying to get right. They've lost five in a row in conference, trying to straighten things out. And they're going to need to win some games to get in. As that one gets through Rinker, and both runners advance. Lasco to third and Similo to second. And now two in scoring position for Chris Brito. Yeah, you mentioned this, Dom, as a get-right game for both sides. Rutgers so far getting right. I mean, when the offense is doing what it's been doing all season long. The pitching, you're just getting guys warmed back up and loosened up. But for St. Joe's, you mentioned just in terms of a get-right game, the pitching has not been there. And, of course, you're going up against one of the best offenses in the country. But for a team that needs to up its conference record in this final series of the season going into this weekend to just make the conference tournament, I mean, today's got to be – a little rough on your psyche when it comes to the guys on the on the mound right now. 1-1. One, one. And that's on the inside corner. Strike two. Now, by the way, that ball that got away from Rinker goes down as a pass ball. So Shearer gets ahead. And his pitch. Brito started to swing. Did he go? No. Close call there. Brito able to hold off just enough. Got to be careful with him as we know how much power he has. Of course, back in the second inning, Jack and that went over the center field fence. 
He hits this sharply over to second. Bendo fields and throws to first, and that'll get the out. But Lasko scores from third, so Brito collects his fourth RBI of today. And it's 10 runs on the day. It's been, it's been scoring every single inning so far. Just trying to look for some positives in the pitching department. Uh, strike one to slight. You see Nick Samillo also advanced to third on that ground out. So he's 90 feet away. As slight, who's one for two with a home run, looks to get him in as well. He tips that foul, strike two. It's a two-strike count here for Shearer, but oh, by the way, five innings, and Rutgers has scored in all five. Swing and a miss. Fastball up and away, and Slight swings through it to end the fifth inning. Ray, he's been That's quite it. effective, and he's pitched in some important spots, too. And he has. Might as well get him, get him some work. The redshirt freshman. He's now been a revelation. You know, didn't even see game action last year. So first year actually on the mound for the Scarlet Knights has been pretty successful. Really no time to get loose, get used to college baseball. He's been able to adapt rather quickly. So he is facing the top of St. Joe's order. Brett Callahan, Conlon Wall, and Nate Thomas, who have combined to go 0 for 6 so far. Uh, St. Joe's two runs on three hits. 2-1. This is grounded over to first. Brito gobbles it up. And there's out number one. Good scoop by Brito. Easy routine player right there for the first baseman. Uh, we'll get a pinch hitter here. This is Nick Senior. Who is batting for Conlin Wall. I wonder if that starts the trend from both teams. Yeah, the game not totally out of reach, of course, but the way things are looking right now as we hit the latter stages of this one, we're already past the halfway point. That's where you, know, you might have to make some executive decisions, as they'd like to say. They got tied up there, senior did strike one. Uh, Portnoy comes in for Justin Cinebaldi, who tossed... An inning and a third of scoreless ball. Good to see. Gave up one hit, didn't walk anybody, struck out one. Uh, just um, as we mentioned, Cinebaldi was the Sunday starter for the first half of Big Ten play, and then uh, Rutgers the last couple times around has just made it a, a bullpen day. But Cinebaldi is going to be called upon at some point if Rutgers has a deep run in the postseason in important situations. No doubt. You can call today a maintenance day just by getting loose and keeping your arm warm, warmed up from the, on the mound. Popped up, left side. Santa Maria back in a fair play, makes the catch. Second out. Yeah, senior, a guy not used too often for St. Joe's, who just popped up there, only had 12 at-bats coming into that one. Didn't even play in a game last season. So you can see St. Joseph's trying to get guys rolling here this afternoon. Trying anything and anything. Trying everything and anything. And now the... St. Joe's name of the year, Max Hitman, is pinch hitting here for Nate Thomas. H I T M A N. What appropriately, what an appropriately named baseball player. I was gonna say, can we put the emphasis on Hitman? Make it, make sure you really emphasize both syllables in his last name. Now pinch hitting here for Thomas. He's got a home run this season, so obviously the name is definitely appropriate. A pitch from Portnoy. Strike two. He's not giving these pinch hitters a moment to settle in. Looking for a quick one, two, three. The 0-2 pitch. That missed outside. You mentioned how Portnoy's not giving these guys room to breathe, essentially, especially since they're pinch hitters, and usually you know, they, try to want, they, they want to try to settle in here. And Portnoy's out there as a retro freshman. He's, act, he's acting like a veteran right now, the way he's been able to speed up. He's feeling it right now, grooving. This one's tugged down the left field line. Slight coming on, makes the catch. Hung up there for him long enough. Good carry on it, too, there by Hitman. But it's a 1 2 3 inning for Sam Portnoy here in the sixth. Now Rutgers pitching on the one side of the scorecard has posted 
trip out to Ann Arbor to wrap up the regular season and then postseason play. Now Rutgers offense is ready to go for the stretch run. Ten runs on ten hits. Now Scarlet Knights have slugged three home runs this uh, on the day. Brito, Schiekhofer, and Slight. Now Tony Santamaria is starting things out here in the bottom of the sixth. Patrick Shearer is in, looking for a second inning of work here. As this one's sent right back from where it came. And that's a line drive single for Tony Santa Maria, second hit of the day. Uh, the new third baseman is Max Hitman. Came into pinch hit for Nate Thomas. And we have a new second baseman as well. That's Cam Walker into the game for Liam Bendo. Now we'll see if Rutgers gets some guys in off the bench when the lineup card turns around. Sheikoffer, then Sweeney, and then it's the top of the order. As that pitch gets away from Rinker, but Santa Maria stays put. No slowing down Rutgers right now. They're trying to <laughs> put some more runs across the board. They're in scoring position right now, despite the one out. No reason to keep your foot off the gas here. It'll be a 2-1 pitch to Sheikoffer. That stays outside for ball three. And the pitch, that's low, rolled slowly to first, but it's going to go down as a foul ball. I hit at the plate first. And so it'll stay a three and two count. Now Rutgers with the big lead, looking for just the latest little bit of history. Looking for their 40th win of the season. Scarlet Knights right now 39 and 12 would be their fourth 40-win season in program history. This one's hit into right center field. It's down for a base hit. It's going to score Santa Maria easily. And Sheikhoffer stops at first with an RBI single, 11-2. to two. Again, look for the positives. Well, the first batter that Davies will face is a pinch hitter. It's Garrett Callahan into the game for Jordan Sweeney. And the first pitch goes to the backstop. And that'll allow Sheikhoffer to advance to second. Thought it'd be a wild pitch. And a rude welcome to the game for Davies. Pitch to Callahan. And he tips it foul at the plate. Caught a piece, too, of Dave Turco. Uh, strike one. Now Callahan, the first of what I would expect to be a couple of pinch hitters over these last couple of innings for the Scarlet Knights. Another guy who was celebrated on senior day over the weekend, spending one year here at Rutgers after four really good years at Ithaca College, Division three school in upstate New York. And it chases that, strike two. That was a first-team All-Liberty League pick. It's the conference Ithaca plays in in his last year there. Has been one of the top guys off the bench for the Knights this year. One, two. Swing and a miss. Nice off-speed stuff from Sam Davies. He gets the strikeout, and there's two away. Yeah, after the wild pitch, go away to settle back in, get the strikeout here. One to go. Uh, Lasco, that is, has been on four different ways. Single, walk, fielder's choice, and hit by pitch. Anytime he's got on base today, Dom, he scored four runs 
today for the Rutgers leadoff man. And he takes that off the plate ball too. Might be an omen. So if you're Davies, you don't want to put you don't want to put <laughs> Lasco on base. Otherwise, you're at the mercy or giving up an opportunity to give up another run here. And with the four runs he scored, he's added to his Big Ten lead as this is pulled on the ground past the third baseman Hitman under his mitt. Turn of third for Sheikhoffer. He's coming home, and the throw gets cut off. So Sheikhoffer scores. Lasco reaches once again. And even though that was just past Hitman's mitt, I believe that's going to go down as a single for Ryan Lasco. It will. So good. And now Danny DiGiorgio, who's got a pair of hits. And he takes strike one. Now the one thing we have to mention here, too, with guys like DiGiorgio, Samillo, and Brito, all three guys honored on senior day, you're into the later innings, and you're starting to get to the final at bat or two that these guys may have in a Rutgers uniform at Baton Field. That's certainly true for DiGiorgio, a sixth-year senior who is all out of eligibility. Uh, after DiGiorgio, you've got Samillo and Brito, guys who could still come back for one more year next year. But uh, Danny DiGiorgio, a guy who's had five outstanding years in a Rutgers uniform. Now you may remember back to his first year, he walked onto this team. He spent a year at Rutgers as a regular old engineering student before he decided to try out for the team. He said, hey, figured, why not? <laughs> One of the hardest majors at this school. Might as well try to walk onto the baseball team. And, boy, he came on at just the right time, and he's emerged as one of the best players on this baseball team. Key cog to this team's historic 2022. of 40 wins. Yeah, Poten right. Potential, uh, yeah, potential top 10, or it should be a potential number one seed in the Big Ten tournament, and potential NCAA tournament team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, DiGiorgio is second in the Big Ten behind the guy at first base, Lasco, in hits, and third in the conference in runs. I mean, it's been a career year for him as well. Uh, he walked on in 2018. He was... Went from walk-on to Big Ten all-freshman team as he swings and misses there for strike three. Uh, been a great career, though, for DiGiorgio. See if he gets one more at-bat. Uh, not a guarantee with just two more innings left at the plate, it looks like, for the Scarlet Knights. But Rutgers, uh, Sam Portnoy, the side armor, is back on the mound for another inning of work, perhaps. Uh, we'll see if he goes a full two. Nobody today has pitched two full innings between either team. It's been one of those... Kinds of weird, wacky midweek games where everybody gets an inning. But Portnoy 1-2-3 in the sixth and now facing Andrew Cosetti to start the seventh. And Cosetti pops it up, left side. The Giorgio's back, Santa Maria there as well. And it's the shortstop to Giorgio that makes the play, one away. We were just talking about him. And again, he's, just, he's a rangy shortstop, has the ability to go side to side. You can catch him <laughs> virtually in the outfield too, coming from that shortstop position as well to track down these fly balls. He's been stout defensively this year. We mentioned the career year as a hitter. I mean, he's having a career year overall. He's just been the total package this year and the easily his best year as a player here in Piscataway. Now, the reason Rutgers is in the position it's in, 16-5 and five in the Big Ten, tied for first in the conference in the final week of the season, it's added transfers who are having career years, and most of its returners who were good to begin with are having career years too, like a DiGiorgio. That's been a remarkable season for this team, and, and we'll see how it plays out over the last couple of weeks. It's a domino effect, Dom, when you look at it. You know, you got guys like Nick Samillo, for instance, having a banner year, batting over 400, and that, that, that just inflates the rest of the lineup, and DiGiorgio, and then you know, Lasko's having a great year as well. Just, you know, I mean, pretty much everybody's having a great year. It's hard to find somebody who's having a down year in this Rutgers program, particularly on the offensive side of things. So it's usually, it, you know, one guy could feed off the next, and the way the lineup has been structured all season long, it's been arguably the best lineup they could put forward any given day, and it could compete with, it could compete with anybody in the country. Uh, three and one is the count now to Brendan Hewitt, center fielder, who's over two today. Uh, Rutgers is 
top five in the country in hits, runs, and batting average. Not too shabby. Good recipe. <laughs> Stepped over to second. Corota Grauer plays it on a couple of hops, and there are two away. Not to mention before, we also mentioned a stat. I forget which. I forget exactly which one it was earlier, Don, but we mentioned how yeah, good their fielding percentage is as really compared to the rest of the country, really not even just the Big Ten. Well. And just that's a mix of veterans and young guys. And you know, we look at a guy at second base right now, Corota Grauer, a young dude who's made a sports center top ten worthy play earlier in this ball game. He's been a stout uh, second baseman as well this season. So um, you know, it, again, it's the it, everything is just breaking right for the Scarlet Knights here in 2022. 15th in the country in fielding percentage. There it is. Out of play. And now here is Brendan Drapeau, the first baseman. He's got one of the three hits. It was a single his last time up back in the fifth. That was off of Rutgers reliever Justin Cinebaldi, who pitched an inning in the third scoreless and gave up just that one single. Now you've seen some good outings, though. Sam Bello got the start, pitched a 1-2-3 top of the first, a guy who could factor into the final game of the series against Michigan if Rutgers wants to use him in a starting role like they did against Maryland. Or Cinebaldi, who again, if you get four or five games deep into a, a postseason, could have to factor in as this first pitcher or a long reliever. Yeah, he could be one of those guys you need in a big spot. You mentioned how we, they're using a couple different pitchers today. I like the fact that they are letting Portnoy go for a second inning now. Is he going to go a third inning? We shall see, but it's at least to get his arm loose going into that final series if they use him maybe on Sunday or you know, towards the back end, I should say, and then obviously early in the Big Ten tournament. Wow, time granted there. I was going <laughs> to say, I don't know what happened there. That was a late timeout there. It looked like, <laughs> it looked like Did, Pro was going to just run out of the batter's box. He thought he was done right there. All right, that was interesting. That was a one-handed, half-hearted time call by Dave Turco. Wow. And now the next pitch is driven down the left field line, slight towards the corner. It is a foul ball. Hit well by Drapeau, but couldn't straighten it out. Yeah, that was hooking well into, you know, we're talking towards the parking lot. <laughs> so Portnoy will try the 2-2 two -two once again. Looking to wrap up two clean innings. This is rolled over to short. The Giorgio waits on it, guns it to first, and it's another 1-2-3 inning for Portnoy. Forget about two clean innings, two perfect innings for the redshirt freshman. And now we stretch here at Baton Fields, all Rutgers in the Scarlet Knights' final home game of the season. To add the video scoreboard, we're going to have a nice brand new setup. We hear a ton about the scoreboard here at Baton Fields. You won't have to w talk about that anymore. And then lights, it, it gives you, beyond the fact that you get the awesome Friday night lights atmosphere at Baton Field, but you also get a lot more flexibility practicing for the team before and during the season. But also, if, if it's going to rain on Saturday at 1 o'clock, you can play the game at 7 o'clock that night. with the, the new turf field that's uh, been here for now two or three seasons, uh, just a, a basically redone facility with what we've seen over the last couple of years. Yeah, and of course, I mean, in that situation, you never want to try to push a game back, but it's going to be great to have that flexibility. Well, that's a nice play. Shortstop to start the bottom of the seventh. That's a great shoot. Brad Norton was the pinch hitter there for Rutgers, and, and he is the seventh pitcher of the day for St. Joe's as he deals strike one to Chris Brito. Yeah, Breeder and one of those guys staying into the game right now over at first base. And, of course, the power hitting is still a threat here. Even though Rutgers is up by 10, they're not really coasting. Picking their spots where they want to go with pinch hitters in this lineup. We're going to cap off a very exciting day. Now this is pulled off the third baseman's mitt. It's dropped. And so the throw across the diamond is in time to get the out. That was Hitman over at third base, who had it in his mitt, dropped it. Nice play to scoop that one up and step back onto the bag. Another pinch hitter here for Rutgers. This is another one of the super seniors. Mike Neister is into the lineup. And it's 2-0. 
you know, your offense is pretty good and your depth is pretty good when Mike Neister can come off the bench. I, I know he doesn't have a home run this year, but, you know, guy has driven in 19 runs, 42 hits on the season. Been pretty solid, 276 hitter. I mentioned before he's a veteran of this program too, Dom, but, you know, again, it's, just, it's great to have him for depth at this point if he's not going to start. Yeah, guy who was top five in the Big Ten in batting average last year is coming off the bench for you this year. That shows you how deep they are. That's one of those good problems to have. Yeah, oh yeah. 3-1. And Neister loops this into shallow right field. Back on it to make the catch. That's Walker over there at second. It's Cam Walker. And it's a 1-2-3 bottom of the seventh inning. For the first time today, St. Joe's has posted a zero in the field. Nice. Up by 10 runs. Again, it's all about keeping these guys loose going into that final series and, of course, into the Big Ten tournament. Good to see him out on the mound. I would expect Dom, since he's usually a midweek starter, might be able to see two innings out of him this afternoon. Uh, it would not surprise me either. Uh, first batter that he faces is Travis Rinker, the catcher. After him, it's Cam Walker and Luca Tre uh, Trejani, who are due up 7-8-9 and nine for St. Joe's. A couple of defensive changes, too, for the Scarlet Knights here. Uh, new corner outfielders. We saw Mike Neister pinch hit for Evan Slight in the last half inning, so Neister goes to left. That's also Cameron Love in right field, who's into the game for Richie Schiekoffer. And a new second baseman, or pardon me, a new catcher. It's Andy Axelson. And this one is tapped to short. Nice diving try by DiGiorgio, but couldn't come up with it. So Renker reaches. Should probably go down as a hit for Renker, and it's going to. And it's the fourth hit of the, hit of the day for St. Joe's, their first base runner since the fifth inning. Looks like momentarily the Georgia was able to get a glove on him. Might have been able to or might have just skipped right underneath. Walker. Good attempt, as you mentioned, Dom. Of course, Rutgers, no need to tighten up here. Only one runner on, of course, with a 10-run lead. See if Parliament can settle in. And strike one, uh, Cam Walker making his first plate appearance of the day. Uh, Walker into the lineup for Liam Bendo, who cracked a home run back in the third inning. Parliament's pitch, and that's low for ball one. I mentioned why Parliament has been the typical midweek guy. Uh, he's been really good in his midweek starts, although he's coming off of his... Worst start of the season. That came against Seton Hall two weeks ago. He, got, he took his first loss of the year, gave up a career-high four runs over three innings of work. But you go before that, it's four starts, four wins for Parliament, who is, again, he's a young guy who's an early enrollee. Yeah, he started out well, and he's been pretty consistent so far in this 2022 campaign. You know, one bad start's not going to ruin the rest of them. And again, probably get a... You know, you're going to get a relief appearance out of him today. You would hope two innings. I would think it's Steve Owens' mind. It would be a good way to finish out this contest. And then you see where he fits in among that rotation or coming out of the bullpen for the remainder of Big Ten play and, of course, the tournament. And he gets a strike out there as Walker cuts through the fastball. And one gone in the eighth inning. Now batting the pitch. Number four. Made him chase. Johnny. One down. That's something you touched on, Nick. <laughs> the question for me, at least, after this is, when do we see Wyatt Parliament next? Uh, you would think with a Big Ten series and then a Big Ten tournament and likely the NCAA tournament still left on the calendar, uh, Wyatt Parliament will get innings somewhere at some point. Uh, the big, big question is, where? Because any of those situations are likely the biggest outing of his career, at least of the season. Yeah, at least, I mean, you, you, just, you just don't know. There's plenty of options for Steve Owens. Whoa, deep in the hole. Throw to second. He's out. My goodness. Danny DiGiorgio slid into the shortstop's hole and cleanly threw it over to second to get the lead runner, Rinker. Two outs. I mean, what more can you say about that guy? <laughs> He's having a career year across the board. He's making those plays look routine. Tremendous. Backhands it. 
Underhand throw over to second, just beat him. Got the force. That was clean, my goodness. Tremendous defensive awareness. Just going back to Parliament, Dom, you don't know really exactly where he is going to go. Now swing and a miss there by Luca Trajani, but the ball got away from Andy Axelson, the new catcher, so uh, oh, pardon me, swing and a miss there by um, Cesarini, the hitter. Uh, Trajani will go down to second base on the wild pitch. Yeah, you don't know where Parliament is going to go exactly when he comes up to pitch coming up in the the weekend series of the Big Ten tournament. You know, he's been a midweek starter pretty much all year. He's got a good record aside from the one start against Seton Hall. So it's a matter of, well, if he does start in a Big Ten tournament game, you know, does he go? Is he one of those short-term stars? Is he, is he going to go maybe three, four innings and make it, make it a bullpen game? Pop up in foul ground. Santa Maria makes the catch. And that'll do it here in the top of the eighth inning. So nice Alec play. Rodriguez, native of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Can come in to face Tony Santa Maria, Josh Kuroda Grauer, and Cameron Love here in the last half inning that likely Rutgers will have at the plate at home this season. Now Rutgers with runs in each of the first six innings to build up the big lead. Now Alec Rodriguez comes in for Luke Gabrish, who pitched St. Joe's to its first scoreless inning in the field today, back in the seventh. Uh, Santa Maria chops this over to short. Uh, throw to first is a good one. And there's one away. Quick work. That's what you want to see for St. Joe's. Just, you just want to get some positives out of some of your relievers now. Josh Carota Grauer is the only starting Scarlet Knight. Still looking for a hit. 0 for 4 so far. That includes a fly out, uh, two fly outs, and a ground out. Trying to get in the mix. That makes it 1 and 1. I think he's at least made a. Great play today. A tremendous sliding catch out in right field coming over from second base. So he's not without his contributions today, despite the tough day at the plate. And trying to extend a 21-game on-base streak. A guy who should be on, at the very least, should be on the Big Ten All-Freshman team when those awards come out in a little while. He's certainly going to be a fixture in this lineup for the next couple of years. Oh, yeah. Now, one, two is tapped to the left side. It's going to be a tough play. Rodriguez knocks it down, and, well, the on-base streak will extend. Josh Kuroda Grauer beats out an infield single and a one-up. And now here's Cameron Love for the first time. Came in defensively in the last half inning for Richie Schiekoffer. He takes outside ball one. And, yes, let's address the... Uh, thing that's probably caught viewers' ears, Alec Rodriguez, A-L-E-C <laughs> Rodriguez. He's A-Rod in a manner of speaking. Sure, right. <laughs> <laughs> Rodriguez, a... An all-group pick, an all-conference pick at Cherry Hill East in his time there, now a junior in college. Uh, as that gets away from the catcher, Rinker, and uh, Corotta Grauer will go to second. He's picked it up over the last two years after not playing in 2020. ERA a little balloon though, unfortunately for him, nearing seven on the season through 23 innings. 23 and a third, I should say. That's a three and one count now against Love. This guy's positive though, Rodriguez. 31 strikeouts in a little over 23 innings of work. And yeah, one of the biggest issues for him has been, as you just saw, control. And he walks Love on five pitches. But baseball certainly not over. Uh, the fun part's just starting. They're going to go on the road. Flight will be tomorrow. They're going to head out to Ann Arbor to play three games against Michigan Thursday, Friday, Saturday. All three of those games will be on the Big Ten Network, live on BTN. Thursday and Friday, both at 8 o'clock. 
and Saturday will be at 5 o'clock. Uh, Rutgers with a three-game sweep of the Wolverines would at the very least clinch a share of the Big Ten title. If they do one win better, they finish one win better this weekend than Maryland, they would be able to get the outright Big Ten championship. As this one's hit off of Rodriguez, caroms to the right side, and no play. So Corona Grauer and Lover both on safely. They both advance safely, and Callahan is aboard on another infield single. Base is loaded. Yeah, a guy who's been on all five times today, Ryan Lasko. Sixth plate appearance of the afternoon, and take strike one. Lasko has two hit, his two singles, a walk. He's been hit by a pitch, and he's reached on a fielder's choice. Checked his swing, but it's strike two. And it's certainly going to be a postseason atmosphere this weekend. Michigan vying, vying for positioning in the Big Ten tournament. Of course, Rutgers looking for the number one seed in the regular season conference title for the first time in school history. So you're going to see a, you would think, a packed atmosphere over there in Ann Arbor. Yeah, worth mentioning, Michigan has not clinched its spot in the Big Ten tournament because it just got swept at Maryland. So they need a win or two. One-two pitch. Uh, that's pulled foul. Nice job there by Kuroda Grauer jumping rope, getting out of the way of the hot shot from Lasko. You can certainly see the hops right there. Uh, Michigan got swept by Maryland. Maryland's going to go on the road and play Purdue who is also on the bubble for the Big Ten tournament and also is going to need to win some games. Another 1-2 pitch. That's outside. For both Rutgers and Maryland, Dom, they're, they're you know going up against Michigan and Purdue, respectively. They're teams you can't overlook because you, know, you may think in the back of your head, well, Rutgers and Maryland are the favorites going into these series. And, right, both teams get sweeps, and then they, they split the conference side with Maryland with the tiebreaker, but... You can under underestimate Purdue and Michigan, as, they, as you just mentioned, they have not clinched their spots in the Big Ten tournament. They're going to be playing, again, this is going to be a postseason atmosphere, you know, series uh, for, a excuse me, the final series of the regular season. They're fighting for their playoff lives right now. Payoff. And it's chopped over to short. Tragani throws to second for one, on to first. It gets away from Kokel. And that will allow a second run to score. So Corona Grauer scores on the ground ball. And then Cameron Love scores on the bad throw to first. Two are in for the Knights. And Rutgers now leads 14-2. Well, had... And once again, Ryan Lasko reaches base after all that as well. And now this one is looped down the right field line by DiGiorgio. Coming on as senior drops in front of him for a hit. And Lasko goes first to third on Danny DiGiorgio's single. A three-hit day for Danny D. And Rutgers not stopping just because it's the eighth inning. Came in defensively for Nick Similo in the last half inning. And he takes ball one. Well, he would like to join the hit party as well here in his first at bat. That's uh, a one and one count. Uh, if you were Rutgers and you wanted a springboard into the end of your season, the three games between the two against Bowling Green and this one against St. Joe's have been that for the offense. My goodness. Now you add up the numbers from the three games, and it's 47 runs on 50 hits. Whew. Another day at the office. And a three and one count to Axelson. By my quick math, and I was no math major, that's about 15 runs a game. That's nicely done, Nick. <laughs> and maybe should, you should have considered math. Uh, I, I, well, well, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I pitched to Axelson. Swing and a miss. Chasing the fastball there. Instead, strike two. 
if I had majored in uh, any type of mathematics, I don't think I would have been lucky enough to come back on this dugout and do simple math. There you go. And this press box. <laughs> so that's payoff pitch coming to Axelson with two outs. Might be in a ba baseball front office somewhere. That one's hit well down the line, but he pulled it foul. I would certainly need a calculator for some of those stats that are <laughs> presented to you. Some of the saber <laughs> metrics. Some of the saber metrics. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know where to begin with those deep stats of baseball. Realistically, really the only sport that, that does something like that. That hit him. A payoff pitch. Obviously, Rodriguez not trying to hit Axelson here, but runs inside, got him, and that will load the bases. And it gives Chris Brito one more at bat. <laughs> I feel like you're just playing with. I feel like you're just playing with fire here. Yo is up at bat right now. Not the guy you want to face in this situation with the game already one-sided. First pitch to Brito is a strike. And we've got to mention here with Brito at the plate, if he hits one over the fence and hits a grand slam, would break a program record for RBI. He's sitting on 69 runs driven in right now. The record is 72. He goes, <laughs> he goes chasing one there, strike he, two. He was going for it right there. <laughs> Uh, Brito today has four RBI, three of them coming on a three-run home run back in the second inning. Runners at every base here. And Devine's 0-2. He chops it foul. He's certainly swinging for power right now. Just getting a piece of that one. Uh, Brito's been on a tear this year. He blew past his career high in RBI a month ago. And now setting his sights on the record. He does bat 429 with the bases loaded this season. 0-2. And he lays off the slider. A bated breath in the press box for the folks who have come to realize that a little grand salami here would be historic. The 1-2. I almost hit him. Now it's Lasco at third, DiGiorgio at second, and Axelson at first. Now some drama to an at-bat with Rutgers leading by 12. It's tap foul at the place. A long at bat here by Brito. Fouling a couple off. He's battling. He's got a piece of a couple right now. Look at that one skimmed off him as well after he hit it. Quickly shaking it off. And now Brito calls time. Uh, Brito, one of those guys who could very well hear his name called in next month's MLB draft. That uh, could be his last plate appearance at Baton Field. When you lead the Big Ten in RBI, you certainly earn that ability, earn that possibility. 2 2. And he pulls it down the left field line, but it hooks foul. Again, he's really battling in this at bat. What basically is probably going to be his last home at bat if, if he does go in the MLB draft. It was only a junior, so he could still come back. Another 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Off speed inside from Devine. And he strikes out Brito to end the bottom of the eighth. And any record-breaking hit will have to come Somewhere on the road for Chris Brito, but in a good place. Four more RBI today, 69 on the year. And two more. And Rowe is a guy who will likely get some innings or get an inning at some point between now and the end of the season. The way he's pitched, he's earned some Big Ten appearances already. Going to face two, three, and four for St. Joe's here. And the first pitch to Nick Sr. is in there for strike one. After senior, it's Max Hitman and Andrew Cassetti due to the plate. 
Rose 01. I missed inside. Uh, Rutgers offense started and did not stop today, basically. Run a one run in the bottom of the first to take the lead. St. Joe's tied it with a run in the top of the second. But in the bottom half of that inning, Rutgers scored five times, and that was basically the end of it. A senior hammers it into the ground. Santa Maria, nice diving play to his left, throws to first, and yet another nifty play in the field for the Rutgers defense. Went away. Fantastic throw by Santa Maria. Bit of an awkward swing there. But it ended up being a hard hit ball over to third base. Santa Maria, of course, recovering. Able to fire on first base. Right in the exact right in the exact place you want to go. Glove high for Chris Burrito. So now Max Hitman, for senior and for Hitman, this is their second plate appearance after coming in midway through the game. Uh, Rutgers is two outs away from, as we've talked about, just some more history. And there's even more history to be achieved as the season goes on. It's been that kind of year for Rutgers baseball. But the next little bit is a 40th win on the year. And this is hitting the hole to Giorgio. Deep in the hole. Double clutches, throws, and it's not in time. Uh, even if he took it out of his mitt cleanly, it would have been a tough play. And Hitman's able to beat out the infield single. Yeah, the positive on that is he backed up Santa Maria quite well, of course, very deep in the hole. So it was, was going to be a very tough play regardless. Sure. But How about yeah, now the double play ball is in effect here. Number 19. Now we're going to pinch hitter for St. Joe's in Andrew Cossetti's spot. Cossetti there, big slugger. A new hitter is Tim Cavanaugh. Getting a chance to swing. Another guy who's a regular for them who had the day off to this point. Uh, if Rutgers wins this, they would go to four. If Rutgers wins this. Rutgers is two outs away from going to 40 and 12 on the year. Let's frame it that way. Uh, they will join three other teams in this program's history who have won 40 games at least. All three of those teams reach the NCAA tournament. Uh, the record is 42, by the way. The teams in 2001 and 2007 did that. You know, the common theme is with 01 and 07. And sit up by tournament. There you go. Now Rutgers is eager to get back to the tournament for the first time in 50, uh, 15 years since that 07 season, led by first team All American Todd Frazier. And with every passing game, they're getting closer and closer. This is rolled to short, and it's under to Giorgio's mid into center field. So Cavanaugh, the pinch hitter, collects a hit, and two base runners here with one out for St. Joe's, looking for scoring before this one's all said and done. Yeah, let's see if Rowe can settle back down here with just two outs to go. No, a run's not going to kill you here and there, but yeah, you want to try to keep this ninth inning clean. Get out of here with the dominating win and just get ready to travel tomorrow and get ready for Michigan. So here is Adam Fine, who came in defensively in center field a few innings back, making his first plate appearance. Take strike one. Again, for Rutgers, all this building towards the Big Ten Tournament next Wednesday in Omaha. All those games will be on the Big Ten Network. Top eight teams in the conference make it. Rutgers has clinched a top four spot. And they've already clinched their first bid to that tournament, and they'll look to make a run. So one and one count against Fine with Hitman at second, Kavanaugh at first. Row in for the ninth and his pitch. I missed it outside, two and one. Not that he's pitching wild right now, but he's just trying to get guys to chase at the moment. You know, ground balls have gotten through so far in this inning, but he's still have the double play in effect, and you know, with two runners on, he can hit any one of those bags. And it's three and one. 
Now obviously, Rowe wants to just throw strikes here with the big lead. But he's uh, one ball away from loading the bases. Now you figure he'll give Fine something to hit. His pitch. Oh, it's high and tight. Lost it entirely. So Fine works the walk, and the bases are loaded. And now Paul Kokel will come to the plate for the first time, the new first baseman as of an inning or two ago, making his first at-bat of the day. Well, not the situation you wanted to see here in the ninth inning. You know, again, you have a 12-run lead. If the worst-case scenario happens here, you still have a, you still have a big lead, but you got to wonder what Steve Owens is thinking. See if he can hope Roe can force a double play or at least get the second out here and leave him in there to finish the job, or he might have to go a different arm. Of course, we're talking worst-case scenario. So Hitman at third, Kavanaugh at second, Fine at first, and Kokel with a 1-0 count. Matt Rowe's pitch. There's a no. Outs, it's off the outside part of the plate. Oh, uh, Dave Turco's had a wide zone today. It's suddenly shrunk. Yeah, not there. 2-0. Oh. The pitch. There's a strike. Gets Kokel to swing through it. 2-1. and one. Especially a swing strike. It should give Roe a, couple, a, little, a little extra juice. The rest of this at bat, try to find that strike zone. Again, give him something to hit, but also maybe make, make him chase a little bit, try to force a ground ball or a pop-up. Another swing and a miss by Kokel, and Rowe back in it now, two and two. That's the type of groove you want to be on. Well, all, all part of the learning process with the freshman. And he deals home. Strike three. Nice rebound there by Matt Rowe. Back in the zone for a couple of swings and misses, and then frames one on the outside corner. And St. Joseph's is down to its final out. So another pinch hitter coming in for St. Joseph, but going back to that strikeout. Three straight, and three straight strikes there for Rowe to rebound. Now just one out away from putting a bow on this home finale. Igo. Yep, the new pinch hitter is Justin Igo, hitting for Travis Rinker here. The pitch. This one served out to shallow left field. Neister coming on, makes the catch, and that ends the ball game. Rutgers ends the home slate on a high note. 14 runs on 16 hits. And the Scarlet Knights have their 40th win of the season as they take this one over St. Joe's 14-2.